Hello and thank you for joining. My name is Max and I'm a Ziscala Posture Control Product Specialist. Today I would like to walk you through a privilege escalation scenario, something which is extremely dangerous on the one hand, on the other hand is quite easy to prevent if you're using a proper Synapse solution. So most uh, cloud security tools today would be able to scan your environment and identify isolated misconfigurations. And in a large environment, you are likely to have hundreds, maybe even thousands of alerts. So it's extremely difficult to understand what's a priority and what's not a priority. Here in this kind of posture control, we would like to help you with that. And instead of just throwing hundreds or thousands of misconfiguration alerts at you, we would flag the low hanging fruit from a security point of view. So here you can see that we have some threats and these threats are based on the MITRE framework. So here we can see that we have 18 threats of privilege escalation. And I would like to focus today on my Azure environment. And here you can see that we have virtual machine with the virtual machine contributor risky role, which is open to the internet. Basically what it means is that we have certain virtual machine, which is exposed to the internet. And it also has an Azure managed identity, which grants it with some access. And this uh, role, the virtual machine contributor is one of the built in roles in Azure. Let's go into one of these alerts and investigate the details. Here you can see that this uh, virtual machine and you can see here all the details is exposed to the public internet. And uh, because it has the virtual machine contributor role, if this machine would be compromised, the blast radius of this compromise will not be limited to this machine. It will be the entire subscription to which this role is granted. Now this sounds like a pretty academical threat. It may happen, it may not happen. Is it really something we should worry about? And now let's take a look at the attacker perspective. So if we go to this machine, we can see that there is a vulnerable web application running on this machine. If you wonder what the DVWA stands for, that stands for them vulnerable web application. So this application is being used to demonstrate uh, some uh, web application security issues. And the web application security issue I would like to focus on today is the command injection. So here the developers decide to expose a pretty straightforward utility, which allows us to run ICMP ping commands to troubleshoot network connectivity from this machine. So let's try to ping an IP address. Let's say we would like to ping 1111. We click on submit and this ICMP command is being executed under the hood and we can see ICMP reply. That's great, but what the developers didn't do here, they did not verify for user input. So I can input any text I would like into this field. And this is a very basic programming error, which we see quite often in many web applications. So if we go here and try to enter a different command, for instance, ping this IP address and also run the ls command, we would be able to list the directory where the web server is running. And you can see here, we see the content of the directory. Let's see if we can get something from Azure because this machine is running in Azure and it has a managed identity. Maybe we can obtain an access token. So we're going to ping this IP address 1111, and then we're going to add another command, the CURL command to the Azure metadata service and see if we can get an access token. Now that we click on submit, this uh, is the response we get. And as you can see, we got a valid access token. Let's see what we can do with this access token. So I would open Postman, my API client. And in this API client, first of all, I would try to use this token, which I already populated here. I would try to use this token to see which subscriptions I have access to. So let me send this command and see the response we're going to get. Okay, so you can see here that we got uh, 200 response and we can see the subscriptions we have access to. The second thing I would like to do, I would like to list the resource groups I have access to. So if I execute another API call, here I can actually list the resource groups. Let's see what response we would get. And here you can see all the resource groups we have access to. And now we reach the most interesting uh, stage. We're actually going to try and create a virtual machine in this resource group we have access to. So if we take a look at the body of this request, you can see that we are asking to create a new machine. The machine is going to be called attack one. 
and we're going to also specify the SSH key for this machine so we'll be able to connect to it later on from a terminal or an SSH client. So let's send the command and see if we get any response in from Azure. And as you can see here, we got a response 201 created. So basically what I did, I exploited a very simple vulnerability in a web application, and that allowed me to escalate my privileges, obtain an access token to Azure, and then from my machine, I can connect directly to your Azure subscription and create a virtual machine. So if we navigate to the Azure portal, and refresh the view. Hopefully we'll be able to see the new machine in a moment. Usually it takes up to one minute to create it. Okay, and you can see here that we have this new attack one virtual machine. Now, if I'm just a greedy attacker, I can simply create a very powerful machine and start using it for crypto mining and make some money. If I am less greedy and think in the long term, I will just establish a beachhead in your environment and I'll be able to further explore your environment and see if I can get access to other resources. So starting from a very basic web application programming mistake, I was able to infiltrate the cloud environment and potentially compromise other resources. This is something which is very easy to fix on the one hand. On the other hand, this is something which is very difficult to detect, but using tools like Zscaler Posture Control, you can do this automatically without having to walk through thousands or hundreds of alerts. I hope that you found this useful. Thank you very much for listening.